What's up, YouTube? Soup! Oh, I'm a lucky here. Today I have a very epic booster box for you. All the way back from 2005. A Rise of Destiny first edition booster box opening. And then I want to ask you guys to check out the channel and subscribe for more amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! videos. Alright, you guys. So it's been a while since we've done more of a classic box opening. Um, Rise of Destiny not being one of the most valuable older sets. And it's kind of in that middle between... Uh, classic Yu-Gi-Oh! and Yu-Gi-Oh! GX because the box changed a bit um, for SOD and Rise of Destiny and Flaming Attorney, sometimes I forget. Um, but yeah, so those are technically still Yu-Gi sets and not GX sets, even though they kind of have the more GX uh, card and box printings. So here we go, let's pop this pack open and uh, inside of this set you guys, we're looking for a few specific cards, but not really, I mean, in the end, you really just want to get ultimate rares out of these first edition uh, classic boxes from 2005. That's crazy. And um, yeah, so before this was Ancient Sanctuary and then Invasion of Chaos, I think. But still, 2005, once again, you guys, it's these are classic old packs, man. This is like 13 years ago now. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. Crazy, crazy. All right, let's pop it open. And so we'll open up 24 booster packs, first edition. And uh, we're using the classic play mat today, but thanks to our friends at Ultra Pro, we're going to go ahead and use the uh, the brown sleeves today. Very cool. All right, you guys, 24 booster packs. So let's get straight into it. Start with the right side there. And so once again, the ultimate rares in this, guys, is really where it holds its value. You get like perfectly ultimate Machine King in here. Uh, creator, machine duplication, of course. Um, and any of these cards you guys like, mint first edition, will have at least like a ten to twenty dollar value, just because it's it's just hard to find a mint first edition or near mint at least first edition uh, ultimate rare printing of a lot of these cards. All right, first pack, and you guys, let's give it a whiff. Taking us back to two thousand five. Wow. Woo! Here we go. Yu Gi Oh. All right, so we have Harpy Lady 2, and these will be all the censored versions. Creeping Doom Manta, back to square one, card was used for a while. Mirage Dragon, stopping those traps, 18 trap disposal unit. Bokoichi, the fright, frightening car. When I was, when the set first came out and I was, what, 14, 13? Um, it, was, uh, it was exciting to use the Boikoichi and Dikoichi. Heavy Mech, Astral Barrier, and our Harpy Lady 1. Actually, pretty powerful Harpy Lady, boosting all wind monsters by 300 points. Alright. Next pack. Rise of Destiny, 1st Edition. Dang, that classic smell is real. Back to square one. Always curious what's going on in those pictures. Zing Zeng Hu. People were using that for a bit when it came out. Harpy's Hunting Ground, Harpy's Girl, and the uncensored Harpy Lady in this set. The one that's uh, only in Rise of Destiny 1st Edition does this card come uncensored, so it doesn't have that um, spandex or whatever that the other Harpies are wearing. A Harpy chick who aspires to flit about beautifully and gorgeously, but attacks sharply. Rare Metal Morph. Harpy Lady 1, Boy Koichi, Heavy Mech, Astral Barrier. Very cool. Rise of Destiny 1st Edition Booster Box opening. It's actually been, I feel like, a long time since we've opened up this set uh, as a booster box. Mind Haxers, Harpy's Petting, <laughs> Harpy's Petting Ground, Elegant Magician, Tactical Espionage, Serial Spell. Instead of Serious, it's a Serial Spell. That one will copy a spell that you play. Ballista, Moki Moki Smackdown, Creator Incarnate, Tribute this card to Special Summoner Creator from your hand, and Woodborg and Pachi. Man, it'd be cool to get a freaking Ultimate Rare Creator. I don't know if I have one of those, or we have one of those Simply Unlucky Collection. I don't think we do. Straight from the pack. Booyah. All right, Tactical Espionage Expert, Nightmare Penguin, Rock from the Valley, 
Elemental Magician. Dekoichi, nice rare. And so, this was used in many decks back in the day, especially like Chaos Era. You have the flip to draw one card, and then if there's face-up Dekoichi uh, on your side of the field, draw an additional card for each one of them. But it was just the whole, I mean, you could use the combo in this set and be like, Boikoichi, Machine Dupe, flip, Dekoichi, and then draw four cards. But um, it was just, Dekoichi was really good because it was a dark that replaced itself, meaning it's not a minus one, usually no matter what, because it's flip summons and you could draw one card. And then also, man, it's 1400 attack. That's That was pretty powerful for a monster that replaces itself, you know, with the, draw, with the draw card. So, like, this card can beat down your opponent's face. So people would just set Dekoichi, flip it, and not care about traps, because, what, you're going to waste your trap on Dekoichi, even though it's 1400? So. Pitch Black Warwolf, Moki Moki King, Fruits of Kozaki, and Harpy Lady 3. But yeah, classic Dekoichi combos. And of course, you were playing Dekoichi in, like, limit removal decks, because limit removal was legal back in the day. If you make it a 2800. Reminds me of the Nobleman of Crossout. Card destroyed cards like Dekoichi. A machine soldier that developed a guard. Mighty guard. Where's its guard? It makes for rust proof metal. Frost <laughs> Dragon. Rock! Harpy's Girl. Ultimate Insect at level 3. I feel like most of the time I've opened this set, I pull Ultimate Rare Ultimate Insects. It's just kind of a thing. And these guys are, uh, if this card's special summon, as long as this card remains. Decrease the attack of all your opponent's monsters by 300. During your standby phase, go get level 5. Yeah, so. It just, like, decreases the attack of opponent's monsters. Boy, Quichi again. Getting, like, a similar last three cards in the pack there. Okay, next pack. Let's see what we get in here. Another back to square one. Lighten the load. This is the add a level seven or higher monster from your hand uh, to your deck, and then shuffle, then draw one. Only use it once per turn. Harpy Lady two, creeping, covering fire. Nice uh, classic machine monsters there. Cannon Soldier and Mechanical Chaser. Foxfire, little Charmander looking thing. Eagle Eye, Elemental Source. It's pretty powerful. People try to mess around with this card. If you have an Earth, it uh, has the Dark Roll Hades effect, and then Fire increases attack by 500 points. Furin Kazan. I love to mess around with this in Six Samurais. Very powerful card. I feel like I may have been better if used earlier, like right when it came out. Because manipulating cards was pretty simple back in the day. Uh, Homoculus, the Alchemic Being. Speaking of manipulating attributes, Mind Haxers. Raging Flame Sprite. Man, that card in Burn Decks. Spell Purification. Fusilier Draglin. Dragon the Dual Mode Beast. Becomes the 1400. But if you have Skill Drain on the field, bam. 28. Moki Moki Fruits. Kozaki. I mean, hopefully we pull at least one ultimate. Maybe two. No Secret Rares. Uh, Mine Hacks. Harpy's Petting Zoo. And oh baby, an ultra rare creator. Okay, that's pretty cool. So at least we got an ultra rare version. Um, select one monster from your grave. Send one card from your hand to the grave. Special summon the selected monster once per turn. This card cannot be special summoned from the grave. Interesting card. I never really got popular. First of all, it's like they did the whole 2300 attack, 3000 defense. Obviously, if he, they would have just made creator a 3000 attack, 2300 defense, it'd be three times as popular. I don't know really what they were thinking there. And then it's a thunder. Thunder's kind of difficult to mess around with. They would have made it like a fairy. Yeah, eight stars. So, Kozaki, Fox Fire, Fox Fire. Or, like, honestly, it kind of looks more like a machine, man. If you just made him a machine. That would have been one of the most powerful machine monsters, for sure. So there's the Creator. Nice, our first foil card. We have no super rares, just an ultra. That's kind of weird. <laughs> What's going on over here? 
I just realized we have no supers, no ultimates, just an ultra. Nightmare Penguin. Moculus again. Mighty Guard. And Sasuke Samurai number four. Because they just want to keep making those guys. This is the toss a coin, call it right. Destroy it. Invasion of Flames. Cool picture. Malice of Dispersion. Eagle Eye. Furin Kaza. Just three more packs on this side with one foil. I mean, in a booster box, you're supposed to get six, maybe seven. Sometimes eight if you're lucky. Mighty Guard. Rock. Harpy's Girl. Machine Dupe. Well, we got the rare machine duplication. Select a machine with 500 attack or less. On your side of the field, activate this card. It's supposed to summon up to two cards with the same name from your deck. So it doesn't say original attack. Never really thought about that before. So if you somehow decrease the attack of one of your machine monsters, <laughs> and you could just decrease your Jizno from 25 or 24 down to 500, you can go get two more Jiznos from your deck. There's your Harpy Girl again, making love with her wings, kind of. Heavy mech. All right, you guys, two more packs. Come on. Where are the foils at? Uh, Raging Flame Sprite, Zing Zang, Lighten the Load, and the No Baby, an ultimate rare. Nice, this is definitely one of the better rares to pull as an ultimate. Fusilar Dragon, the dual mode beast. Beautiful. Definitely one of the more valuable ultimate rares as a rare, especially mint. So probably number one in this set, even one of the more valuable ultimate rares in general will be Machine Duplication. And then going from there, probably Dekoichi and this guy. And then there's uh, the Dark Blade Dragon in here. So. And so now we know that this box is a... It's not a hobby box. I forget what, whatever it's called. But yeah, so certain boxes, barcodes, will be higher or lower. And so that makes them uh, either have foils or super rares or rares that are ultimates. Or sorry, super rares or ultras that are ultimates or just rares that are ultimates. So this box will only have rare ultimates. Foxfire. For some reason, I can't explain that very well right now, but basically, there's two different types of boxes for Ultimate Rare boxes in the GX era slash Rise of Destiny, Soul of the Duelist. So, very cool. So, yeah, we should only be able to pull Rares Ultimate in here. Last pack on the right side. It's still a very weird foil combination here. I would expect to pull at least one or two supers. Mind Hacks. And then there's the super, Divine Wrath. <laughs> what a weird box. Discard card, we negate the activation of an effect monster and destroy it. That card was used for a while. Yeah, I remember Ultimate Rare Divine Wrath's uh, first edition were like at least 20 bucks for a while. Back in the day. Especially when like some of the counter fairy stuff started to come out. I like how they got Cannon Soldier all over the place. All right, you guys, let's start with a whiff. Take it back to 2005. Ah, okay, let's do this. Mirage Dragon, Harpy's Petting Zoo, and Picaroo's Circle of Enchantment, nice. This is the damage to the controller of this card by card effects becomes zero until the end phase. See, monsters that have that effect was just much more powerful, so you don't have to use a trap. Elemental Source again with Harpy Lady 3 and the Moki Smackdown. And so Des Wombat was released with that effect. So people were like, uh, let's just side deck our Des Wombats against Burn decks. They can't do much. Creeping Doom. Harpy Lady 2. Elemental. Nice. That's a Another Fusler Dragon, the Dual Mode Beast. So, a couple rares of that guy, that's fine. Moki Moki Smackdown, Fubrin Kazan. Keep going here. So, if you want to get another Ultra, I think Perfectly Ultimate Machine King would be nice. Nightmare Penguin, Moculus, and Flint. Always interesting. Never was a big fan of those kind of cards. Creator Incarnate. Woodborg and Pachi, a new form of the Enigim, the Inpachi, remodeled by cutting-edge Dark World technology. 
Maneuverability has been sacrificed for strong armor, which was considered more important. You can machine dupe that guy, though. Just saying. That would be interesting. Hey, there he goes. He's duplicated in this pack. All right. Let's see if we can keep it up here. Maybe, just maybe, get another ultimate in Ultra. That'd be pretty freaking sweet. Guy of the Soul of Combustible, Combustible Collective. <laughs> interesting guy. Um, I think it's you can tribute. You can increase this. You can, so you can tribute up to two pyro monsters. If you do, this card increases its attack by 1,000 times the number of tributed monsters. So you're going to make this guy 4,000. When this card attacks with attack higher than defensive opponent's monster, inflict difference piercing. So you have to tribute pyro monsters, not fire monsters. Too bad it's not just fire. Um, destroy this card during the end phase, though. But still, that card was fun to mess around with in your fire decks. Moki Moki Smackdown. 4,000 dude on the field with piercing. Throw Mega Morph on top of that. Booyah. Zing Zan Hu. Line the load. Triangle Ecstasy Spark. I pulled that ultimate right, I feel like, a few times. That's uh, until the end phase of the turn. All attack of all Harpy Lady Sisters becomes 2,700. Your opponent cannot activate any trap cards. Effect of every trap card on your opponent's side of the field is negated. See. I uh, was at a tournament and I went to a judge and I was trying to play Triangle Ecstasy Spark without Harpy Ladies. Basically kind of like a cold wave. And they said that's not how it works. So, you know. I was like, can't use your traps. Traps on the field are negated. Because it was even, it was better in cold wave and worse than cold wave in the way that cold wave would stop them from using spells. But this would also negate the effects of their face up trap cards. So, I liked it. So, if you guys understand that, kind of like a just preventing my opponent from dealing with my attacks for that turn. Basically similar to Heavy Storm or Giant Tree Name. Mirage Dragon. Brock, Light the Load, Homoculus, Necklace of Command. Creator Incarnate. Two Woodborgs again. Okay. Next pack. Can we get another Ultra slash Ultimate Rare? Dark Blade the Dragon Knight. So that's the guy I was talking about. Pretty sweet as an Ultimate. And then he worked well with uh, Magical Scientist. Each time this card inflicts battle damage to your opponent, select three monsters from your opponent's grave and remove them from play. So this guy would stop your chaos, your opponent's Chaos decks from going off by just removing their cards. Invasion Flames, Eagle Eye. We were in Kazan. But back in the day, you had to be careful because Return from a Different Dimension was legal and um, I'm not going to remember the magic one. Uh, dimensional. The paid 2,000 life points, special summon, the remove from play monsters. So both of those were legal at the time. Mirage Dragon, Raging Flame, Chain Burst. Interesting. Moki Moki Smackdown, Elemental Saurus. Just a few more packs left, you guys. Give it to us. Kaiba! Here we go. Come on, Kaiba. Let's get at least another Ultimate or Ultra. Heart of the cards, you guys. Come on, Kaiba. Mighty Guard. Big Core. Oh, gosh. Oh, man. Big Core. 2300 attack, Fox Fire, Pitch, Black, War Wolf. Go ahead and sleeve up Big Core. Alright, just three more packs. So, three supers on this side. Can we get Ultras or Ultimates? I feel like, if, if anything, we have one foil left. And I think I'd rather be an ultimate than an ultra. Fruits of Kozakis. So, let's see. Two packs. Like I said, pretty usually six foils per box if you're lucky. Maybe seven. Mirage Dragon. Homoculus covering fire. Uh oh, Fubrin Kazan. Last pack of Destiny, you guys. Believe in the heart of the cards. Here we go. 
Kaiba gave us a big core in this box. What will the heart of the cards give us? Harpy's petting zoo. And then, oh, baby, what? What? Perfectly machine. Oh, that's not perfectly ultimate. That's just perfect machine keen. First edition ultimate rare. That's like the most valuable card in the set. Okay. So maybe I was wrong. So obviously I was wrong. Um, there isn't hobby stuff. It's probably started in GX. There's a difference between hobby boxes and commercial boxes or resale boxes, however you want to look at it. So I think it started in GX then is where different um, barcodes on the back, you can tell the difference between foil boxes or rare ultimate boxes and then uh, super ultra ultimate boxes. So that wasn't the case for Rise of Destiny. So sorry about that. Wow, because we just pulled a rare ultimate and a ultra ultimate in the box. Dude, that is actually probably the most valuable card in the set. Ultimate rare first edition. Holy crap. Look how beautiful that is. What? A perfectly... What the? What kind of last pack of destiny is that? That's straight heart of the cards, dude. Ultra rare ultimate. Perfectly perfect machine king. I believe he's seven stars there. And then increase the attack of this card by 500 points of each machine type monster on the field, other than this. So it counts your opponents, too. This guy could get huge. Imagine if you machine duped while this guy was out there. Easy 4,000. Perfectly, perfect machine king. Wow, gorgeous. What a beautiful mint condition card, too, man. That's something I'd want to get graded right there. Beautiful. Wow. That was like unexpected at the end there. And you got to remember like prices for these cards don't really exist because, um, you know, this is like straight mint condition, near mint condition. You know, this is like when you purchase a card, you're not expecting it to be in this good of condition. Absolutely crazy. Wow. That is a finish right there. Rise of Destiny first edition. Holy moly. It's about as good as it gets, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Classic 2005 booster box opening. Um, we're trying to do some classic openings this week, you guys, doing some classic Starter Deck showdowns. I don't know if you guys have posted the videos yet, but just uh, the start of Kaiba Evolution, Yugi Evolution, and then uh, I'm thinking we're doing another classic pack opening as well. Really want to bring back some of the nostalgia this week. So stay tuned for that. You guys have not already, but what an epic box for the recap, for supers two ultimate rares, one of them being ultra ultimate, and of course the creator over there. I mean, the only way this box could have been better in my opinion is Perfect Machine King with Ultimate Rare Machine Dupe, but still, uh, the Dual Mode Beast or Fusuda Dragon is still a fantastic ultimate rare pool. Definitely one of the best Rise of Destiny first edition boxes I've ever seen. That's fantastic. But yeah, you guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed the content. Subscribe for more epic Yu-Gi-Oh! videos. And of course, post in the comments below some of your experiences with Rise of Destiny back in the classic Yu-Gi-Oh! format or Chaos format with some of these cards. And simply, oh, lucky signing out.